This is my review of Cells at Work Code Black. Okay, so in this episode, AC1677 actually takes center stage as the main character of this episode. And for good, for good reason. So, because it, we actually find out a bit more about how he actually feels about his relationship with 2153. And in short, long story short, it doesn't, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly end well. It, there's a reason jealousy is part of the title for this one. So, so it starts off with them deliver, with, um, 1677 delivering oxygen to a cell um and he gets a stamp he goes on his merry way and just begins to go on to the rest of the deliveries however when the cell actually goes to plug plug in the oxygen to make some energy to produce some energy the canister explodes converts into ros and which if, if you guys don't know ros is basically basically it's it basically it's a, this chemical compound that mixes with oxygen and causes oxidation um case in point Case of point, the can the oxygen canister explodes, and the and the cell rapidly ages into an old man. So, and he, and he and he's very quick to point fingers at 1677, who literally just gave him his oxygen. Um, and and sure enough, when people find out more, find out about the accident, and namely that 1677 was the cell that deli was the red blood cell that delivered it, they begin they also begin pointing fingers at him, pointing out that he should be a bit more careful and that he should. Figure, and that she should work harder to remedy it. Um, however, as he's as he's getting an earful from the from the other cells, um, twenty one fifty three actually actually shows up and explains that there are multiple causes for ROS to form in the body, and that it's not exclusively one cell's fault, but rather that they all need to work for the sake of the body, and that it isn't, and that as long as they do their best, it likely won't happen again. At which point the cells realize that they were a little bit harsh, apologize to sixteen seventy seven, and then leave. Um, and, and 1677 can't help but admire 2153's that um, knowledge on the subject, pointing out that he really knows his stuff. And tw and 2153 re merely remarks that he ha kind of has to if they're going to work as red blood cells. They need to know this kind of stuff. Um, at which point they remark that they actually that they actually have somewhere to go after this, and that they're actually be going to go to a an award ceremony for rookie red blood cells, and that they have to continue, and that they need to go there even though they are pretty sure it's a waste of time. Um, so they, so they go, and, and, and then we find out a little bit about 2153 and his career as a, as a red blood cell, because as it turns out, all of that hard work and recognition has been, is being paid off, because during the, because during the award ceremony, he actually gets an, gets an award for the most oxygen delivered of a sink, of any red blood cell in the room. So, and he's initially, and he's initially surprised, but graciously accepts the award on stage. And as he's doing that, 1677 um, winds up being winds up into conversation with a couple of the other red blood cells around him, and they begin to ask him if he's if he's best friends with that he's best friends with him, and if he's as much of a hotshot as he is. Um, and 1677 merely remarks that he's nowhere near as impressive as 2153 ever is or ever will be. And and from this moment on, you so, you slowly start to see that 1677 has a bit of an inferiority complex now. Because as a, because he's always admired 2153 and his work ethic, but this this uh, this scene just kind of hammers home that 21 that 1677 kind of has a bit of a kind of has a bit of a rough go of it and kind of sees himself as inferior because he doesn't work near he doesn't feel like he's frequently under quota quota and he doesn't work and believes he doesn't work nearly as hard as 2153 does. And as he's leaving to go do his to go pick up his deliveries and trying to pick up the slack. Two red blood cells, the two red blood cells from last episode, as a matter of fact, they they come they come along and and point out that how unfair it is that everybody that everybody else that some people get reward for the hard work, and while everybody else just kind of has to work to, work to live up to the example of twenty one of whoever gets picked for the award in this case twenty one fifty three, um and that and that they and that sometimes. They, and that sometimes they feel like it's just a, an excuse for the higher ups to pat the to pat the red blood cell one of the red blood cells in the back as well as themselves, um, and they, and they remark that and they remark that there is a way for him for him to catch up though, and that if they and if they go with, and if they, he goes with them that he'll let, they'll actually show him a nice sweet spot where he can get some more energy, and he declines for the time being, um although the although once he once he leaves the other red blood cells remark that he's. 
that he can blow him off for now, but he is one of them, and that he will eventually come around to seeing things their way. Um, at which point, he, at which point, um, 1677 and 2153, um, proceed to head to the Sabicius clan, um, which is a clan located near the scalp. Um, and 2150, and 2153 tries to st strike up small talk, small talk and small conversation with, um, 1677, with 1677 just, just kind of, he doesn't want to, he doesn't really want to, he just, he just kind of points out that he, that he's the eight, that he's the ace red blood cell and that he doesn't really needs to hang around with him and, and when he can easily just race ahead and continue working on his deliveries as he always has been. But, but because 2153 likes the company, he merely, he merely responds that he does, that he doesn't really care all about the, the, the awards or anything like that. And all that really matters is that they do the best to deliver oxygen to the body. Um, and so, but in any case, they head to, they head to the scalp. Um, and 2153 remarks that they haven't been there since the whole spot pattern balding incident, and that and and they haven't really seen what kind of what kind of state it's in since they left. So, but so they go there only to discover that the scalp is still very much a little bit barren, and what little hair is there is isn't really growing in as thick as it used to be. Um, and they and sure enough, and sure enough, 2153 greets one of the hair matrix cells and asks what exactly is going on. And the hair matrix cell re merely remarks that circulation hasn't been as good to the scalp lately, and that because of that, the hair is kind of either gone or thin or very thin, and thin and wispy, and that they can't and that they can't make the hair as strong as it used to be, um, which 2153 can't help but feel a little bit sad about. Um, but which one 6077 asks the hair matrix cell where the sebaceous gland is, um, and he points them in the and he points them in a direction, stating that they'll have that they won't be able to take their carts with them and they'll have to use the stairs. Um, so and. 1677 and Toymer isn't very happy about that, but he des they decide to carry their oxygen cart boxes up the stairwell anyway, um, and remark that, and at, at some point, 2153 notices that 1677 is kind of lagging behind and offers to take some of his oxygen for him to help him help him up, but 1677 adamantly refuses, even, even after 2153 nearly remarks that he just wants to help, and 1677 doesn't want to. But they, and in any case, they continue up the stairs, and one of the oxygen containers in the stairwell actually explodes, again producing ROS. And we've seen, and in this episode, we saw how it affects um, normal cells, cells that have like all the all the fixings, all the internal all the internal um, cell parts, and all that stuff. But we but we didn't see how it affects red blood cells. And as it turns out, ROS when it when it, it comes in contact with a red blood cell actually deprives the red blood cells' ability to produce oxygen, and Causes them to, to degrade rapidly. At a case in point, several of the red blood cells who got affected fall off the stairwell and to their deaths. Um, at which point, at which point, 2153 and 1677 realize that they need to hurry and get to the sebaceous gland before they can, uh, before something bad can happen to them as well. And they do eventually make it to the top of the stairs and reach the sebaceous gland, where they actually meet the sebaceous gland cell. Um, and he and he merely remarks that he can't really move and just kind of points them in the direction of where they need their where he needs his oxygen to be and asks them to go plug it in and set it up for him and they do that and and he remark and he remarks that he's proud that people that they're still continuing to deliver his oxygen his oxygen even though it's his last day <coughs> and and 2153 can't begin and 2153 and 1677 after at the sebaceous gland cells request actually take some tea and, and talk to him about what his job actually is and the sebaceous gland, the way it works is that the cells actually store sebum and 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 pile it up, and then and then excrete, excrete it through the body later. Um, and and twenty and twenty one fifty three merely remarks that it's an excellent job, until the until the um cell until the uh, sebaceous gland cell actually remarks why how it actually does this, um or at least how he actually does it. So how how it works. Is that it fills up with sebum? Is that the cells normally fill up with sebum, and then they, and then when they die, they release the, the stored sebum, and that's what and it's excreted through the scalp. Um, so and case in case in point, the sebaceous cell, gland cell merely remarks that uh, he's going to he's basically going to die because it's his last day. So he's going to so what he's going to do, so how he explains is that he's going to rupture himself, and then this and then the tank behind him is just going to explode and send the sebum everywhere. Um, and and rem and remarks that the boy that the two boys probably don't want to be around when he does that since he's about to do it now, so they leave, 
and he and he and he then proceeds to do exactly what he says. puts on He puts on his hat and proceeds to do his final task, um, as, as the morbid as it is. Um, but he also remarks that on the on his way out that he hopes that that when he ruptures he won't wind up make, creating any ROS and mixing it with the sebum. But which unfortunately happens, and it causes the and it causes a very foul odor to spread throughout the to spread throughout the body, to spread throughout the scalp, and it's quickly it's quickly clear that that was not intentional. Um, the 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 brain cells are quick quickly realize this is not supposed to be a thing. Um, but it, it's happening, and they quickly realize and they quickly realize that it's actually a bad odor, odor from old age. Um, which basically mean, which basically implies that this bot that the body that they're in is actually very old. And also doing a bunch is is also very old and also isn't do isn't do also taking care of itself, which is a dangerous combination apparent as it seems. Um, but they continue, but but this is what kind of kind of finally pushes 1677 over his breaking point, realizing that it was entire that it might that it was entirely his fault that this that the ROS was released and caused and caused this foul odor. And 2153 merely remarks that it's not entirely his fault, since there's a whole bunch, since there's whole, again, there's a whole bunch of factors that contributed to ROS being being formed in the body. At which point, 6077 merely merely snaps back whether or not the whether or not he's actually experienced it firsthand. And 2153 understandably remarks that he hasn't, but that doesn't mean it can't happen to him. Um, at which point, 6077 and 2153 have a bit of a falling out, with 1677 remarking that he doesn't want to be around 2153 anymore. Because he don't, because he feels like he's he's just going to hold him back and decide, and then proceeds to leave to leave. At which point, at which point he runs into the red blood cells from earlier, who then who then decide to who, who then decides to go with willingly, and they take him to the small intestine, pointing out that he that they that they actually can get a bo a boost from there, and that it's it's distributed throughout all, the entire body, but that specifically the the small intestine is the best place to go. Um, and sure enough, when it hits. Um, it turns out it's, as I explained in the last, in the end of the last review, it's caffeine. Caffeine just kind of pours into the small intestine, but specifically throughout the entire body, but specifically the small intestine in this case. And it proceeds to get, to give all the cells a boost of energy with the, with the red blood cells that have experienced it before, remarking that it'll leave 2153 in the dust once it's, once it kicks in. Um, at which point the capillaries, the, the um, capillaries in the body begin to dilate. And the red blood cells are just able to rush all the way through. Um, and and twenty one fifty three, who isn't under the effects of caffeine, quickly notices a, di a difference in sixteen seventy seven's pace and how quickly he's delivering oxygen. And he remarks that, and he and sixteen seventy seven merely remarks that he's that why um twenty one fifty three is moving so slowly and that he should and that he should really pick up some caffeine if he wants to keep up. And 2153 really remarks that he senses the, the idea of caffeine, but that he doesn't really like the effects because if it, if it lasts too long, he can actually wear himself out. Um, and 2153 merely remarks that, it, that he feels like if they keep getting caffeine boosts, that it, event, that it could eventually have a drawback. But, 21, but 1677 merely interrupts him, responding that anything that makes them feel good can't possibly be that bad for them, and continues to deliver oxygen. Um, and at a breakneck pace, might I add. At which point, and eventually 2153 begin, winds up at the nasal cavity and is kind of a little bit confused as to where to go. He's not entirely sure where where he's supposed to deliver his oxygen from because the cap the the cap capillaries in that area are all very mixed up. And six and when 67 1677 shows up and asks him why he's still there, he merely remarks that that's the reason he can't figure out his way around. Um, but at the, but it's immediately at this point where the body actually suffers a nosebleed. And because they're in the nasal cavity at this point, it causes several of the red blood cells to flow out. Um, and as it turns out, this was in actually induced by caffeine. If you, as it turns out, if you induce too much, eat too, ingest too much caffeine, specifically in energy drinking in this case, I forgot to mention that, but the, but the guy's been drinking energy drinks to actually keep himself energized. Um, it can cause, it can make you more susceptible to nosebleeds. And case in point, this guy has a pretty ma massive one, and all of his red blood cells begin flowing out. Um, at which point. At which point, another red blood cell hollers to 2153 that he that there's a safe that he has a safe spot, and 2153 reaches his hands out, takes the other takes the other red blood cell's hand, and he's pulled into the safe spot. Um, and when and when he asks 
remarks to, to 2153 that he needs to hurry up and get and get to safety. Um, 16, 1677 merely remarks that uh, he doesn't want, he doesn't need 2153's help and that he can, that he's fine by himself. But as it turns out, that's not exactly the case because right around that time, the ca the effects of the caffeine wear off and. 1677 quickly realizes that he is now addicted to caffeine and needs more caffeine to be able to get a boost of energy. Um, and at which point, uh, at which point 2153 Miller remarks that he should, that he can't be talking like that. He still needs to deliver oxygen. Um, at which point 1677 Miller remarks that he's always been impre impressed with um, 2153 and that he feels like 2153 just kind of left him in the dust. And that he doesn't really need, and that he doesn't really need 1677 around, and that it's better if he just goes off and dies. Um, at which point, 2153 remarks that that's not really true, and that it's because 1677 has always been by his side that he's wanted to be the best red blood cell that he can be, to basically serve as a shining example for 1677 to look up to, rather than the other way around, which is that 16, which is that 1677 actually now envies 2153. And that, and that 2153 has always viewed 1677 as a precious friend to him, and that he can't lose him because he feels because without him he loses motivation to work. Um, and that gives 20, 1677 the motivation to actually save himself, and he pull and he pulls himself to safety, and then and then grabs 2153's hand, and 2153 pulls him into the corridor where he and the other red blood cell are kept, are hiding while they wait for the platelets to come along and fix the nosebleed. Which incidentally, which incidentally they do. They snap at the red blood cells to get to attention position so that they can actually get through. Um, at which point, at which point the lead the lead platelet actually remarks that they that he need that 2153 needs to take care of good care of his friend. Um, and then and then they proceed to go fix the nosebleed. Um, and later that and later that day, um, the he, uh, 1677 runs into the red blood cells from earlier again, the ones that are addicted to caffeine, remarking that. The, remarking that he's most likely going to need it to another boot pick me up to get through his next delivery but 1677 merely remarks that he doesn't need it and but doesn't tell them and while he doesn't tell them the reason it's it's heavily implied that he that it's because of, of his friendship with 2153 that he no longer needs the caffeine boost to get through his day because he now has a good friend to help him get through his day instead and that's and that's kind of one of the more wholesome parts of this episode of the series that I've seen so far that like it doesn't matter how hard you work. It doesn't matter if if people are working better to you. As long as you have a good friend in the work environment to help you get through your day, that's all that matters. And that's a kind of a wholesome ending for this episode. But in case, yeah, that's going to be do it for my review on Cells at Work Code Black. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord server. Link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description or the end screen if you want to help support the show. It's only a couple bucks a month. It helps me make videos. So if you guys want to see more videos from me, then be sure to check those out. Check those out either in the end, in the description or end screen. And speaking of the end screen, if you want to see more videos from me, then check out then check out either of the two videos that are on that are on the end screen after this after this video plays. The one video. The one is is the video recommended to you based on what you, on your watch history, whereas the bottom one is the most, whereas the other one is the most recent video. So be sure to check both of those out. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.